Hi, welcome to Science Studio Complete Guide Series. Today we'll discuss about gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is a process whereby non-carbohydrate precursors such as pyruvate, lactate, glycerol, amino acids are converted to glucose. Note that it is different from glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen to form glucose. It is an essential pathway to maintain blood glucose level especially in times of starvation or fasting. Gluconeogenesis takes place predominantly in the liver whereby glucose is produced and passed into the bloodstream for delivery into other tissues. Gluconeogenesis essentially is a reverse of glycolysis and has three main bypass reactions. Bypass 1 seeks to reverse the action of pyruvate kinase which is step 10 of glycolysis. Step 2 reverses the action of phosphofructokinase 1 which is step 3 of glycolysis and lastly bypass 3 which reverses hexokinase which is step 1 of glycolysis as mentioned in glycolysis video which I had made and I put in the link in the description below in this table glycolysis step 1, 3 and 10 which are in red form are thermodynamic favorable thus essentially irreversible it requires very high amount of energy to reverse these steps the 1, 2, and 3 at the start of the screen represent the 3 bypass reactions in the whole cascade of gluconeogenesis. I will slowly dissect this pathway step by step into easy to understand steps. All 3 bypass reactions must occur to allow gluconeogenesis to take place. These 3 steps are irreversible in glycolysis, which needs to be reversed in gluconeogenesis, in which has large negative standard free energy changes in the terms of negative kilojoules per mole thus requiring high energy to overcome this glycolysis reaction. Gluconeogenesis is an anaerobic pathway, thus requires energy. This table shows the sequential reaction on gluconeogenesis starting from pyruvate, in which the steps in red are of importance. I have indicated which bypass reaction occurs at which cellular location, in which bypass 1 occurs at mitochondrial, 2 at cytosolic, and 3 at endoplasmic reticulum. These tables also show that gluconeogenesis is an anaerobic pathway and requires high energy. One of the main sources of pyruvate is lactate, which is produced in great quantities during muscle exertion, as it is mentioned in the glycolysis video. It is a product of anaerobic glycolysis. Lactate is released from the muscle to the bloodstream and travels to the liver for conversion to pyruvate and ultimately to glucose via gluconeogenesis. Let us start with the first bypass reaction. Bypass 1 takes place in the mitochondrial. Osolar acetate has to move to the cytosol, but mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to this molecule, thus requires conversion to myelate to be transported via myelate shutter, which will be elaborated later on. Pyruvate plus ATP via pyruvate carbolase to give osolar acetate. And osolar acetate plus GTP via phosphoenopyruvate carboxylase to give phosphoenopyruvate, which is known as PEP. Pyruvate to PEP requires high energy in the form of ATP and GTP. Osaloacetate plus NADH via mitochondrial myelate dehydrogenase to give myelate to be shuttered off the mitochondrial membrane via myelate shutter and NADH+. Cytosolic NADH is produced as it is used and is required to be replaced for gluconeogenesis to take place. The bypass 2 of gluconeogenesis is the conversion of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 1-phosphate via fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, in which is the reverse of glycolysis step 3. In essence, the action of phosphofructokinase 1 is reversed. The bypass 3 reaction is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glucose via glucose 6-phosphatase, in which is the reverse of glycolysis step 1 in essence hexokinase, therefore obtaining its starting material glucose. This increases circulating blood glucose concentration to be delivered to the tissues when starvation or fasting. Glucose transporter 1, otherwise known as GLUT1, undergoes a conformational change upon binding the glucose to allow its passage. It is reversible depending on the concentration gradient. The transporter function to restore glucose equilibrium inside and outside of the cell. GLUT1 can be found in red blood cells and brain as they rely heavily on glucose because 
red blood cells have no mitochondria, therefore it requires glucose entirely for its energy via glycolysis that occurs in the cytosol. Brain, which has very low glycogen levels, requires glucose as a source of energy. Let us move on to the final recap of gluconeogenesis to crystallize all our knowledge. This massive but concise table is what you need to understand throughout this whole video. During bypass step 1, which corresponds to glycolysis step 10, note that gluconeogenesis is essentially the reverse of glycolysis to obtain glucose. Bypass 1 includes pyruvate carboxylase, PEP carboxylase, and mitochondrial myelate dehydrogenase to allow passage via myelate shutter from mitochondria to cytosol. These three enzymes are used to reverse the action of pyruvate kinase. This bypass reaction takes place in the mitochondrial and this product is oxalic acetate, PEP, and myelate respectively. Moving on to bypass 2, which corresponds to glycolysis step 3, in which involves the action, sorry, in which involves the reverse action of phosphofructokinase 1 via fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase in which occurs in the cytosol and this product is fructose 6 phosphate. Lastly, the last bypass reaction, which is bypass 3, corresponds to glycolysis step 1 and is a reverse of hexokinase enzyme via glucose 6 phosphatase to obtain glucose. So, after learning the whole pathway of gluconeogenesis, the purpose of this pathway is to increase circulating blood glucose in times of starvation or fasting. This pathway responds to glucagon, which is secreted by alpha pancreatic isolate cells, which antagonize, sorry, which antagonize insulin. And glucagon increases gluconeogenesis and glucogenolysis, which will be the topic of the next video, and inhibition of glycolysis, which will be linked in the description below. So feel free to screenshot this video to aid in your learning via flashcard or review this video again, or even leave a comment below and I will answer your doubts. So after understanding all the bypass steps of gluconeogenesis and its purpose during times of low blood glucose such as fasting or starvation, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button down below and click on the bell icon so you will not miss any video like this in the future. Do support us by visiting Sai Studio on Patreon. Any amount will help us greatly in our educational journey together. Thank you and I see you again.